Welcome to the Rapid Revolution. Today, we will explore how SpaceX's Raptor engine is different than previous rocket engines, what engineering SpaceX had to do to make it possible, and what capabilities the Raptor engine unlocks for SpaceX. Previously on this channel, we have talked about Rocket Lab's Rutherford engine, which uses batteries in its design, so check that video out if you're interested in that topic. But without further ado, let's learn about the revolutionary SpaceX Raptor engine. The Raptor is a closed cycle, full flow staged combustion engine. This just means that all of the propellants flow through multiple combustion chambers, combusting in stages. However, some simpler, more common engine designs include open cycle engines, oxidizer rich staged combustion, and fuel rich staged combustion. In all of these cycles, some of the fuel and oxidizer is combusted in a pre-burner that drives a turbine, shaft, and turbo pumps. In the open cycle, some of the fuel and oxidizer are burned to power the turbo pumps, which pump the fuel and oxidizer into the main combustion chamber. However, that original fuel and oxidizer used to power the turbo pumps is exhausted out of the rocket instead of being directed back to the main combustion chamber. This causes it to be wasted. To cut down on this waste, closed engine cycles were created, and in the past they were ran either oxidizer rich or fuel rich. Originally, the Russians created an oxidizer-rich engine with their RD-180. In it, a little fuel and all the oxygen is sent to the preburner to power the turbines and the turbo pumps. As this high-pressure, hot, gaseous, oxygen-rich stream hits the turbine blades, it would melt basically all normal metals. However, the Russians developed a crazy metal alloy that could withstand these powerful corroding effects of this oxygen, and they did this in the 60s. However, on the American side, a closed fuel-rich engine was developed using hydrogen as the fuel to burn with oxygen. This engine is called the RS-25 and it powered the space shuttle flights. Ultimately, this engine had two different pre-burners and two different turbo pumps. And because they used a hydrogen-rich fuel stream, elaborate seals, which were multiple layers deep and even had a seal pressurized by helium, were used to prevent the fuel-rich stream, mainly hydrogen, from passing through the oxidizer pump and finding liquid oxygen to blow up with. Each of these engines by the Americans and Russians were revolutionary pieces of technology. However, SpaceX is building the holy grail of rocket engines with its Raptor, the closed cycle, full flows stage combustion engine. So why is the Raptor's closed cycle, full flow combustion engine design the best of the best? Firstly, each pre-burner is powered by a rich stream of what it's pumping. So the fuel pre-burner runs fuel rich and the oxidizer preburner runs oxidizer rich. This eliminates the need for elaborate seals to keep fuel rich streams from contacting oxidizer streams and vice versa. This improves the reusability by limiting the required maintenance for seals. Secondly, since each respective preburner streams are so rich, the preburners can operate at lower temperatures. This reduces wear on the turbine and turbo pump assembly, limiting the amount of combustion in the preburner and actually increasing the amount of combustion occurring in the main combustion chamber. This increases reusability and efficiency of the engine overall. Furthermore, since all the propellants must pass through the preburners before reaching the main combustion chamber to produce thrust, the mass flow rate through the engine is very high, and it allows the turbine to run at cooler temperatures and lower pressures. Again, this reduces wear on the turbine and turbo pump assembly and increases the reusability of the rocket. Lastly, since both the oxidizer and the fuel enter the combustion chamber as a gas after passing through the preburners, the combustion reactions occur at a faster rate, requiring a smaller combustion chamber. With a smaller combustion chamber, the chamber pressure can be increased, improving the efficiency of the engine. All these reasons make a closed cycle, full flow stage combustion engine sound amazing. And this explains why the Raptor is a different breed of rocket engine. However, if all of these benefits exist, why hasn't this been accomplished before? The answer comes down to a mix of technology and engineering decisions. We will explore some reasons why the Raptor might succeed where the Russian RD-270 and the American Integrated Powerhead Demonstrator flopped. Firstly, we will discuss two engineering design decisions that make the Raptor engine operable at all without even considering the larger goal of reusability. First off, SpaceX has developed their own proprietary SX500 Inconel Super Alloy that can resist the corrosive oxygen rich streams in the oxidizer preburner. Because this alloy contains exotic elements like rhenium, molybdenum, and others, 
The metal forms a single crystal alloy with no grain boundaries for the hot, corrosive oxygen to attack. Furthermore, when the alloy is heated, it forms a stable, passivating oxide layer. This acts as an outer shell to protect the metal surface from further attack, and it preserves the metal strength. By constructing the chamber and the turbine blades out of these materials, the parts can withstand the 12,000 PSI hot oxygen rich gas entering the oxidizer preburner. I would love to know more about how SpaceX actually constructs these parts in their super alloy foundry, whether it's 3D printing or some other method. So if you know anything else, let me know in the comments below. Secondly, selecting methane as the fuel has a lot of great benefits for the overall rocket system design. However, in the context of the Raptor engine specifically, methane will completely combust and won't form coking that clogs up the engine. Additionally, since methane is a larger molecule than hydrogen, it won't be able to slip through turbine seals as easily, and this won't require elaborate turbine seals like previously mentioned. And if the methane slips through some of the seals, it ultimately encounters a methane-rich stream, so it's not that big of a problem anyways. In addition to these two engineering design decisions by SpaceX, a couple more design decisions were made to help further improve reusability and the longevity of the Raptor engine. Firstly, both the liquid methane and the liquid oxygen components are subcooled, meaning they aren't sitting right at their respective boiling points. Vapor bubbles cause a phenomenon called cavitation, which should be avoided at all cost, because they can dig out little craters on the surface of turbine blades and other precision engineered metal chamber parts. Secondly, SpaceX has developed methox torch igniters. These are similar to spark plugs in your car, and they help initiate the combustion sequence using electric sparks. Other rocket engines use hypergolic materials that combust on contact with each other to jumpstart engine combustion. However, these hypergolic materials would be extremely difficult to produce on Mars, so SpaceX has ditched them in favor of the methox torch igniters. Ultimately, these engineering design decisions allow the Raptor to limit the damaging effects of the methane fuel and oxidizer coursing through the engine and it enables the Raptor engine to fire up on Earth, Mars, or anywhere else it might go. Now that we've talked about why the closed cycle full flow combustion engine design is superior and some of the engineering choices SpaceX made to make a real engine possible, let's explore what the Raptor engine means for SpaceX. SpaceX designed this engine because they simply have to. The American attempts by Aerojet and Rocketdyne and the Russians' attempt at an engine like this failed for a wide variety of reasons but ultimately, full flow closed cycle engines aren't necessary to put mass into Earth orbit. The simpler rocket engine designs we discussed in the beginning of the video are more than sufficient to put mass into orbit. However, for SpaceX to achieve its vision of going to Mars and back, they need an engine that extracts the maximum amount of energy from its fuel for the long journey and is durable enough to fly hundreds of times, maybe even up to a thousand times. Ultimately, SpaceX has put all of their eggs in the Raptor basket. They aren't designing any other engines, so they have no choice but to succeed where others have tried and failed. They have bet the future of Mars exploration on the Raptor and literally can't get off the ground until it works. To wrap it all up, let's talk about what capabilities and advantages the Raptor engine unlocks for SpaceX. First off, the radical reusability of the Raptor engine may end up being a 100 times improvement over previous engines like the RS-25, which was used in the space shuttle program if it reaches its goal of a thousand flights. Secondly, since the Raptor uses all of its fuel and oxidizer and does so more efficiently, more thrust can be created with less fuel. This frees up room for cargo on trips to Mars, and it could also allow SpaceX to launch bigger, more profitable missions for its customers focused on putting satellites into Earth orbit. Thirdly, by powering the engine with methane as the fuel, SpaceX can take advantage of the abundant, cheap natural gas resources for fuel on Earth and on Mars, it will be possible to manufacture methane too, making return trips possible someday. Lastly, when you consider reusability with the choice of methane for fuel, the fixed cost of building the rocket will begin to pale in comparison to the operating cost of fuel coursing through the engine over its 1,000 flights. For launching its customer space packages, they can make these launches more profitable for SpaceX by lowering the cost of fuel, but when going to Mars, SpaceX will likely have to foot the bill itself at first, since there isn't a thriving Mars industry to supply launches for. Any little reductions in the cost per one Mars trip will make a big difference over the large number of required flights. Well that's all there is for this video, 
I hope you learned about what makes the Raptor engine different and better, some of the crazy engineering SpaceX did to pull it off, and what the Raptor unlocks for SpaceX going forward. Thank you so much for watching this Rapid Rev production. Please drop a like and subscribe. Also, I'll be doing a giveaway for my subscribers when I reach 1,000 subscribers, so every like and comment on a video will enter your name another time into the pot. In the comments below, tell me, why are you excited about the Raptor engine? Would you actually be willing to go to Mars for the adventure, or would you rather let someone else go instead? How many bases will mankind have all over the solar system by 2200? What do you think will be the name of the Mars superhighway that all these starships take to go back and forth? So leave your thoughts in the comment below, and if you want to talk more about technology, come check out the Discord and join the community. You can also find Rapid Rev on Twitter and Instagram with the links in the description. If you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel even more, head over to the Patreon and show Rapid Rev some love. All donations help make this content possible. Until next time, take it easy.